everybody to our evening service. If you would please stand for our first song, page 46, song number 46, My Savior First of All, song number 46. tonight. I don't know if you ever thought of it. Fanny Crosby could not see and imagine her sight seeing Jesus Christ for the very first time, the very first face you see. What an amazing thing it could be. And one day we will. You ever wonder what he looks like? You ever just sit down and just contemplate what it's going to be like when you actually see your Savior that died on the cross for your sins and mine? You get to actually see him. You get to see the prince, just like Thomas said, right? As Jesus said to Thomas. What an amazing day it's going to be. It really is. I have a lot to look forward to. Not counting the dear ones that are up in glory that this song talks about. Praising him for his mercy, love, and grace. What a wonderful Savior. Amen. Join me in prayer if you would ask God to help us during this time. Father, we do thank you for this privilege of coming into your house tonight. And we're ever grateful to know that we have a Savior that has given us a precious promise, just not of salvation, but spending eternity with our beloved Lord in heaven. And what a wonderful day it's going to be when we actually see our Savior face to face, face to face with Christ our Savior. What a wonderful day it will be. Lord, no more tears, no more heartaches, Lord, no more pain. It's all going to be passed away, and we'll get to enjoy your presence forevermore. Lord, we can't wait for the day. Thank you for the promise of the second coming of Christ, knowing that at any moment you can arrive 
Help us to be found ready, God. Thank you, Lord, for this time where we can meet with you. We honor you most of all, knowing that you prepared this night for us. Help us to have open hearts. Lord, help us to be attentive. And help us, Lord, to have a teachable spirit that you may be glorified as we leave this place, knowing that, Lord, we're obeying your commandments because it's a true sign of discipleship, God. Help us to love you, to adore you, to worship you. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Turn to 198 for our next song. Song 198, Joy Unspeakable. One ninety eight. things for you tonight this evening if you did not get a bulletin just raise your hand one of the ushers will get one into your hand it will be imperative for you to have it especially if you're going to pray here momentarily you're going to need one and so a couple things I want to bring to your attention if you did not get our Bible reading schedule for this coming year let me encourage you to get one um, set some goals if you would in the front cover you'll find my goals for 2022 I sat down um, the other day and just start to listen off to some goals I have, personal goals, um, my family goals, then I have church goals. And so let me encourage you to grab this, get it, get, have some goals. If you don't aim at something, you're never going to hit a target, right? And so you have to aim at something. It might just be that your goal is just to read the New Testament once this year. Let me encourage you to do it. Um, at least read the New Testament once, but... Whatever it may be, just get into the Bible, amen, and just set some time. Well, you might have a goal on prayer, how much you want to pray every day. Set that goal, how much you want to witness every day, pass out one track at least a day, right? Have some influence on someone's life each and every day. And so it could be various things, but let me encourage you. Um, if you're like me, you're going to set a goal of, well, I, I want to lose some weight, <laughs> amen? And so 
you can put that in there too. And so that's what it's for. But let me encourage you, write some goals down. Use this. It's a wonderful tool. It really is. I've, I've marked mine. I actually have 2019s. I was looking through the other day and just seeing how God spoke to me then. Obviously this past year, looking at how God spoke to me. It's good refresher of just how God is working in your life. And that's really what this is for. So let me encourage you to get one if you do not have one. And then our church directory, if you have not um, sent me your email address, just text that to me on your phone so I can get you into the system. It's instantchurchdirectory.com. Um, it's just for our church only. You can go to any of your app store on iOS, Android, and just download it. Once you're in the system, you can click add adult or child if you have a family, and then you can add your name, your birthday if you like. But a typical church directory just has um, your name, telephone number, where you live, stuff like that. And so make sure those vital things are in there if you would. That would be great. And then this coming Friday, 6 p.m., family fun night here at the church. So there's a lot of people signed up. I think most of us in this room are good to go. But let me encourage you to be here. Brother Rob Morris will be emceeing that for me until I arrive later that evening. I'll be preaching up at Tabernacle that evening. Then I'll be coming in a little late. But I'm going to try to jet and try to get here as soon as possible to be with the church family here. And Lord knows we're usually up, at least when I was at least when I was a teenager, I was up to about midnight. So I know we're getting older, right? We can't handle staying up that late. And I don't I remember when I was a kid my mom would want to watch the ball drop. And around eighteen I didn't really care anymore. 17, 18, so I'd just go to bed. But something fun, something fun to do. But let me encourage you, we're not going to be here that late, but we'll get you home at a good time so you can avoid the crazies on the street. And then January 2nd is going to be our State of the Church address. We're going to be looking at what God has done this year and what God's going to be doing next year. We, there's a lot of things planned for this coming year, so I'm excited about I really am. And so let me encourage you to be out for that 6 p.m. Then we'll have a short a business meeting to follow after January 2nd, after the evening service. And Stephen will be preaching for us that night. And so it'll be his last message before he goes back to college, which will be good. And so I'm looking forward to hearing him. And then January 5th, 5th as the ushers come for the offering, missionary Matt Cook to Australia will be with us. He'll be presenting, and then he'll be preaching for us that evening. Let me encourage you, get around missions. If you're not given to missions, give to missions. I'm telling you, Philippians chapter number four, God will not supply all your need if you're not given to missions. That's in context of giving, mission giving. It really is. So let me encourage you to give the missions. I'm all for missionaries. I'm all for someone that will go all the way around the world and give their life for the gospel. I hope you are too. Are we alive tonight? Is it too warm in here? You're falling asleep? I can turn it down to 65. Keep you awake if you like. I feel, I'm feeling warm right now. And so it has to be a little warm in here. How are you feeling, Brother Stephen? A little warm? That's what I thought. And so I know everyone else is different. But it's good to see you all here tonight. Lord bless you. Why don't we have Brother Mark? Oh, my. I'm losing my memory. Brother Mark, why don't you pray for the offering, if you would?
song 271, Lord, I'm Coming Home. 271, if we please stand for this last song. Lord, I'm Coming Home, 271. request if you would I left Brandon Pelkey on here continue to pray for him he lost his father um, last week and so continue to pray for him and the family they're going to be having a funeral funeral on January 8th I believe that's the still target date so just pray for him and his family as they're going through this hard time um, God really worked through his father and his brother and himself is the reason why they're in the ministry and so what a wonderful testimony really wonderful testimony of God's grace and so maybe next time he's down this way he can tell the story of how God worked um, through his father to get him and his brother into church and get them where they're at praise the Lord for it and then a couple other things um, under our missionary spotlight lighthouse update from lighthouse legal ministry um, God blessed they had some October seminars and workshops um, specifically one in Ohio and that went well praise God for that um, also pray for them as they look to hire another attorney um, and also pray for some seminars coming up I think they're doing one in North Carolina this year and one in Ohio again and so pray for them if you would and obviously pray for them as they deal with a lot of legal issues with many different churches they primarily help independent Baptist churches and so just pray for them as they're helping them with legal issues especially with um, government mandates and things of that nature um, also, the raises of China, the Truth Baptist Church has celebrated 20, their 20th anniversary, so praise the Lord for that. They had a wonderful service of just looking back at where they started, many memories, and a lot of tears during that time as well. 
and it was good to see what God did with a small group of people, small beginning, and how God is blessed. In his prayer letter, I want to say he mentioned 1,000 or 2,000 people that got saved and baptized and are still serving the Lord. Um, some are there, some are in China, some are spread around the world, but God's truly blessed them during that time over there. Continue to pray for them. I didn't have enough room to put it on the prayer sheet, but they had an incident at, and it's a long, a very long story, they had an incident at a gas station. They pulled in, something happened, nothing was their fault, but that he was in jail for 24 hours. Then they finally let him go, saying that he did nothing wrong, but it was just a great, weird situation. But pray for them as they serve God. Obviously, you know that um, they can, they're found out, they can be gone very quickly. And so just pray for God's protection and watchful care over them. And they also had a Christmas party, their annual Christmas party. And each and every Sunday school class had a short little presentation with some music and skits. And God really blessed through that as well. Also, our member spotlight, pray for the Morris family. They're traveling um, currently right now up in Vermont. They'll be making their way back for this coming Friday, if you would. And if you flip the page, there's a lot of things on this page and some things I did not get on. A lot of things to pray for here, if you would. Um, you'll look under guidance, please, and pray for the Rousseau family. They're the ones that are going to be taking over Pelham Baptist Church. Um, currently, right now, he's raising some support. He's going to Oklahoma to present at Heartland Baptist College um, at their church planning conference. And so pray for them as they travel and try to get the support necessarily needed um, to get here to Pelham. They are planning on moving here at the end of January. And so just pray for all those details, if you would, as they make their way. And praise God for them. Really, praise God for them, a young couple that just wants to serve the Lord. And I'm excited what God's going to do up there through them. And then if you look under health, please, um, a lot of things here, if you would. Pray for the Damari family, um, pretty much everyone in that family, John Damari, um, Mrs. Damari, Lois Damari, and Kristen Damari. Um, they're, all three of those people are dealing with COVID. Um, also, Annie is dealing with COVID. And pray for the, co is it the Comers or the Coomers? Comers. This is a family where their house caught fire in Nahant, and just pray for them. They were, they were badly, um, not, I don't know if they're badly burnt, but um, just pray for them. They are suffering injuries from that house fire. So do pray for that family and pray for the O'Neills that God would just open up that door to opportunity for them to witness to them. Um, that's a unique situation. And maybe you can just tell how, like really briefly how um, they got a hold of you or someone got a hold of you. Yeah, you can go ahead. You can just... Amen. Yeah, wonderful opportunity. Wonderful opportunity. Pray for them if you would. That'd be wonderful. And then pray for Cindy Lopes if you would. 
Um, she's actually down with COVID as well. So keep her in prayer. And then I think that's it. Does anyone have a prayer request tonight, Steve? Bobby? Yep. Yep, pray for Brother Cody. Correct. Pray for the bandos. They flew out today. Yeah, pray for that as Palmer hopefully finishes things up, as they say every week. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just, <laughs> it's like a joke now. But anyway, um, they're doing the best they can, I'm sure. And so, but they do it all for free. They really do. And so if there's something priority that they have to do, they're going to do it before us. But just pray for them as they, they navigate the red bus, and hopefully we'll get it. 100% fixed and good to go. That would be great. Anyone else have any prayer requests? Yep, Bob. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Yes, Sarah. Okay, pray for COVID or pray for Ray if you would. For health. Anyone else? Yes. Yep, sure will. Amen. Pray for Pastor Michael, if you would, as he making his traveling gets clarity. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, spirit, spirit always breaks your spirit, so <laughs> unfortunately... <laughs> It broke mine a long time ago. <laughs> That's why I don't fly spirit anymore. <laughs> yes, Ed. Yikes. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, we'll try to figure it out. Hopefully. Very close. Hey, Amen. Yeah, pray for Isaiah if you would. He's getting baptized on the 23rd. And then just pray for, continue to pray for the Fisher family. They're under guidance. Just, just continue to ask God to work if you would. That'd be wonderful. That'd be wonderful. Anyone else tonight? Urgent. Okay, let's pray. Let's get through this prayer, prayer list. Let me encourage you to partner up with someone you usually don't. Get to know someone else. And let's try to pray through this list. Ask God to bless as we seek him.
those that are still praying, continue to. I encourage you. For you that are done, please open up your Bible to Proverbs chapter number 14, please. Proverbs chapter number 14. As we look at the Word of God tonight, this will be the last message for 2021. And so, it's time to go out with a, a bang. Amen. Here we go. Proverbs chapter number 14. We're going to look at one verse tonight. We're going to make our way down to it. We'll start in verse number one. Verse 14. With her house, but the full of her with her hands. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord. But he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. Talking about the Lord in his ways. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. But the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But much increase is by the strength of the ox. I preach this message every year, and here it comes, Paul. And so I hope you're ready. We're going to be considering keep the ox and clean the crib. Keep the ox and clean the crib. Here we see a wonderful truth, a proverb, by the wisest man of all. But yet he himself could not even apply this, this logic from, lo, from the Lord. That's the whole reason why he had 300 wives and 600 concubines that caused him to go away from the Lord, and yet he could not apply this. But it's still a valuable truth that each and every one of us need to consider tonight as we look at ending our year in 2021. Some of us might have started off well, but we're ending terribly. We might still be doing good, right? But it's always better to finish well. Amen? You always want to finish well. You never want to finish poorly. And so this is something to remind us as we consider. There's a lot of thoughts I want to bring. I'm kind of try to go through it slowly, more of a teaching lesson. But I hope you take some notes, if you would. Ask God to help us. Join me in prayer, if you would. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the privilege of your word, knowing that it's divinely inspired and preserved for us people that are here tonight. To not just be hearers of your word, but doers also, that we would not deceive our own selves. I pray that we would, Lord, draw great attention to what you place emphasis on and help us to resemble Christ. We thank you for your love and mercy that you extend to us, Lord. This is why we're not consumed, and we praise you for it. But we ask for your undertaking, your help tonight, as we consider the word of God. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Franklin Roosevelt's closest advisor during much of his presidency was a man named Henry Hopkins. During World War II, when his influence with Roosevelt was at its peak, Hopkins had no official cabinet position. Moreover, Hopkins' closeness to Roosevelt caused many to regard him as a shadowy, sinister figure. As a result, he was a major political liability to the president. A political foe once asked Roosevelt, why do you keep Hopkins so close to you? You surely realize that people distrust him and resent his influence. Roosevelt re replied, Someday you may, be, you may well be sitting where I am now as President of the United States, and when you are, you'll be looking at the door over there and knowing that particularly everybody who walks through it wants something out of you. You're le you'll learn what a lonely job this is, and you'll discover the need for someone like Henry Ho Harry Hopkins, who asks no for nothing except to serve you. Winston Churchill rated Hopkins as one of the half dozen most powerful men in the world in the early 1940s, and the sole source of Hopkins' power was his willingness to serve. His willingness to serve. What a wonderful illustration. I'd encourage you to remember this as we make our way through this lesson tonight. 
Number one, looking at verse number four, where no oxen are, the crib is, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. So let's, number one, look at the manner of the ox, if you would, please. It's quite elementary, but I think it's helpful for us to consider. An ox is made to serve. If you look at the book of Mark, you'll constantly see Jesus on the move. He's represented as the ox in the book of Mark. You go to Revelation chapter number four, you'll see four and five, you'll see four figures mentioned there. Those represent the gospels of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus being the king or the lion is found in Revelation chapter number five. Then you see the ox, the servant. It's someone that's just serving the Lord, constantly serving. That's his job. And you see Jesus do this in Mark chapter number two. He's always constantly on the move, helping people, assisting people, healing people, doing miraculous things for people, and praise God for it. But he's just the ox, he's just the laborer. And here we find a valuable truth in God's word that this is the type of manner of what we should be in this life. Turn with me to John 13, if you would. John chapter number 13. Let's look at verse number one. I'm not going to make my way through all this, so I would like to get to verse 17, but I, w I probably won't. But in verse number one, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of his world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil being now put in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper, laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Now imagine this, and I'm not going to make our way throughout this whole entire passage, but here Jesus is leaving us an example of our life, of what we should do. If he being the master is stooping down to wipe someone's feet, we ought to serve one another, and this is what he's trying to convey to disciples, even his enemies, even a Judas. I remember Leonard Ravenhill once said, I think it was him, the Christian or the, the person that's truly serving the Lord will have three things. You'll have your Gethsemane, you'll have your Calvary, and you'll have your Judas in your life. And isn't that true? And so you're going to have it at some point in your life. Here, Judas Iscariot that walked with Jesus Christ for three and a half years is about to betray him, but yet Jesus Christ that knows all things still washed his feet. Don't you find that interesting? He still washed his feet. That tells me even though this person that was about to betray him, he still was loving toward that person. And that's the way we ought to be as well. God tells us over again in Galatians 5.13, For brethren, we have, not, we have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for occasion to the flesh. That means you just don't do what you want to. You do what God wants you to do. And we find this, but by love, serve one another. And so this is the motive. We just don't, uh, we're just not like the contemporary world out there. We just do what we want to, and we try to plagiarize it by someone's idea. But no, we go forth saying, well, I have liberty in Christ, and because I have liberty, I have liberty to serve him. And I keep that in context to Jesus Christ and what he desires me to do. So liberty is not a license to sin. John 12, verse 26 says, If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there, will, there shall also my servant be. And if any man serve me, him will my father honor. And so there's an idea that God puts forth that if we serve him, he's going to honor us because we are serving him, and the Father's going to bless us in the process. And that should encourage every one of us even to serve, more, serve God more than what we are today, right? Going into 2022, we should have a desire, I want to serve God to the highest capacity that I possibly can, not for the praise of men, but for the praise of God. And that's always the goal. Um, we don't do things because we want to get applause from men. We do things because we want to praise the Lord. Now, if you don't have a servant's heart, you just don't have a servant's heart, and that can't just be worked up into you. It's just not going to happen. And so, because repentance is going to have to take place, and God's going to have to grant repentance. That's something that's really not that mentioned that often. We think we can first John 1, 9 it all the time. That doesn't always work. His word does say that God would grant them unto repentance. And so 
sometimes God's going to take you through something because our thick heads just don't get it, right? And so you can't First John 1 eye it and think you're right with God. That's not the way it operates. And so repentance has to be taken place. You're going to have to turn from it. This is a part of serving the Lord. The Psalms, well, I'll bypass this. But we have the whole idea is to serve the Lord. This is the whole idea of the ox, to go. We find that in what God has told us, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that's our goal as Christians, to go and to serve and to serve others. Last night, we're down. At, four of us were down at Downtown Crossing, passing out tracts, trying to serve others, trying to witness to them. Pray for a lady. I forgot to mention this, a young, young girl, Hannah. She, she went to a, ch- a church locally here. Um, a Baptist church locally here and just got away from the Lord and um, she took a track um, from my hand, went off to the side. I was giving a couple else, a couple of tracks to some other people and she just turned around and started talking with me and she's lost. But just pray, pray that God works in her life. That's a divine appointment that God had us cross paths at night and she was super excited. Pray for Hannah, if you would, that God continues to work in her, her life as she seeks him. But that's what it's about. It's just about serving Jesus serving Jesus, but it's also supporting, supporting as you're serving. That's the whole idea. An ox is someone or, or an animal that carries the grain back, as we would call it. In Matthew eight seventeen, it says, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. And so that's, we see that Jesus Christ took upon himself our sinfulness, Right? And so we, we have a burden that God has entrusted to us. He did say, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's still a burden, but he has entrusted us with something. And praise God that we can go forth and do it. In Romans 15, 1, it says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Some of us think we're strong, but we're actually weak. Some of us think we're weak, but we're actually strong. Right? If we think we're strong, most likely we're weak. Because we have a false sense of the idea of who we really are in God's eyes. But this is what we ought to do as God's people, just as Jesus has done it himself. We ought to do it as well. And not to please ourselves. That's the key in Romans 15.1. A lot of times, specifically in this world, we just celebrated Christmas, but we want to please ourselves instead of pleasing the Lord and focusing on him. And so may God help us to look at others that have issues and problems or just need, they need someone just to pray through them with something or assist them with something or help organize something for them so they can get on track um, here even in 2021. A lot of times I truly believe why we don't disciple people and it's just not for the pastor. Right? Discipleship is just not for the pastor. It's for every single person in this room. And I truly believe the reason why we don't disciple people as we ought to is because we're just consumed with self. Well, I don't have the time to. Well, I just don't have the energy to. Well, we do. We have a lot more time than we realize. We really do. We just have to tighten it up and prioritize and set limits. But we we ought to be discipling people and helping those that are weak among us. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak. You know, there's some feeble-minded even in this room today that need some help. They really do. Some people that are just weak-minded, that just need encouragement. How are we helping them? Be patient toward all men. So this is what, this is what God has called us to do, to support what we're actually saying that we're doing or that we want to do. But it's also to supply. Um, we get this idea by treading out the corn, treading out the corn. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians, if you would. 1 Corinthians chapter number 16. Let's look at verse number 17. Actually, skip down to verse 18, if you would. Talking about Stephanus and Fortunatus. Achaicus says in verse 18, For they have refreshed my spirit in yours. Therefore, acknowledge ye them that are such. So we are to supply or 
our conversation be, should be refreshing to people. Refreshing to people. 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, it says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. So we see this idea of going, this idea of teaching, but this idea of training or instilling in someone the values that God has, serving the Lord so others can do the same thing as well. And that's the goal. Christians reproducing Christians. That's the goal in the Christian life. Turn with me to the, back to chapter number 9 of 1 Corinthians. Chapter number 9. Look at verse number 9. It says, For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for the oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt. This is written, That he that ploweth should plow in hope, and he that thresheth in hope shall be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? That's a question. So he's saying if, if the ox is the one that is instilling and instructing the hope of the word of God, why would the ox expect to reap carnal things back? Should be spiritual things, right? That's the goal. And this is what he's trying to convey here. C.T. Stubb once said, I'm getting desperately afraid of going to heaven, for I have had the vision of the shame I shall suffer as I get my first glimpse of the Lord Jesus. His majesty, power, and marvelous love for me who treated him so meanly and shamefully on earth and acted as though I did him a favor in serving him. No wonder God shall have to wipe away all tears from off our faces. For we, for we shall be broken hearted when we see the depth of his love and the shallowness of ours. And that's a man that gave his life to missions at the age of 18, got saved. Famous cricket player over in England at the age of 18. And he gave his life to the Lord. And this is what he says about, him, about his own self. My, what mighty insight he had. Number two, so we see the manner of the ox. Let's look at the the maintenance of the ox. There's a regular maintenance that needs to take place in each and every one of our life. Turn to Psalm 139, if you would. Psalm 139. In verse 23, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. If you look at verse number 1, he says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me, but he's asking in verse 23 and 24, Lord, do it again. Do it again, right? And this is something that we have to ask of God. Lord, do it again. If you search me once, do it again. Show me something in my life that's hindering you or hindering your power working through me. In Psalm 62, 2, David said, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. This word examine actually means a close and careful examination of a place or something, an inspection to determine effectiveness. An inspection to determine effectiveness. So David is saying here, Lord, search my life to see if I'm actually being effective as I should be. And that's a question that every one of us have to ask. Lord, and not ask, you're not asking me, you're asking the Lord. You're saying, Lord, am I effective for you? Let me ask you, when's the last time you, you saw someone saved? When's the last time you when's the last time God spoke to you in your in your devotional time? When was the last God time where you can say, just God showed up and just did something in my devotional life that just radically changed something in that day? That's what I'm saying. When, was the, when can it be the last time you saw that or got, you just experienced God on a different level? We need God to search us. Am I effective for you, God? Are my thoughts intents of the heart acceptable in thy sight? Do my action, actions identify with my God that I profess? These are questions that we have to answer and ask God more or less have him answer it for us. 
The wonderful thing is, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his wife by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So we measure everything by God's word. Here it is. It's, a, it's the ruler. It's a measuring stick. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Right? A cow that's an ox that's just wallowing in his manure is going to get infected, and he's going to become ineffective. That's why it has to get cleaned. That's why there's regular cleaning in the stall, because he'll get he'll develop some type of a disease and infection. And sometimes it happens in our own life. We get infected to where we have bitterness in our life, our unforgiving spirit, something that's been looming in the past, but it's just hover, hovering over us, and we just never get it settled with God. And that, 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 that tells us that we're ineffective. And we are ineffective if there's hatred or bitterness or something hovering over us that we haven't gone to God with. But also there's just not regular cleaning, but there's regular care. In Job 23, 12, it says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed his words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Can I just stop and just, just focus on this verse for a second? Job is saying here, now if you consider what Job knew at the time, he didn't have the New Testament, right? But he's saying, I esteem his words more, let's just put it reality, than the three meals I have every day. There's more value in this than what I need to physically survive. And I, I hold it up more. That's what he's saying. And so, do we value God's word just as much as Job did? <clears throat> I'd venture, most of us probably in this room, probably not. Job was a man, perfect and upright in all of his ways, that feared God and eschewed evil. And we're going to be working back through that come this year on our, our men's meetings. But that's, that's who Job was. He feared God and he shoot evil. And so do we esteem his words just as much? Because that's the care that we need for our life every day. We need it every day. We need to come to God every day, Lord, feed me. I think there's a lot of malnourished Christians that are just trying to go, but they just don't have the capacity to do it because there's such a lack of God's word in our life to where we can't function the way God desires. Remember, we are his workmanship created in, in Christ Jesus under good works. And so God's done something in our life that he wants to do, but if we're just male nourished Christians, well, we, we can't get, we're never going to obtain it or get to it. And so this is where regular care comes in, and it's a daily task, it really is. In 2 Timothy 2.21, it says, If any man therefore purge himself from these... He shall be a, a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. What he's specifically talking about there in context is fornication. And so, and that, that can be applied to many different things. Do we have an idol in our life that is taking the place of God? Well, you're committing spiritual fornication with Jesus, right? Because you're to cleave unto him, number one, most of all. So if we're not cleaving unto him, well, we have another love in our life, right? And so this is where we have to take inventory and ask God, Lord, every single day, show me, Lord, thy, through thy word what I need. Is there anything in my life that's contrary to you? Andrew Murray once said, Nowhere can we get to know the holiness of God and come under his influence and power except in the inner chamber. Please listen to the last portion. It has been well said, no man can expect to make progress in holiness who is not often and long, and long alone with God. We'll never make process, progress. It's never going to happen unless we're in that inner chamber. What he's talking about is we're in the holiest of all, meeting with God. And this is what Jesus Christ has created for us through his flesh, right? He's given us this access to meet with him. And so if we're not spending long times in this place, well, we're not going to be the holy people that God desires us to be. Now, that doesn't mean we're self-righteous and we, you know, we go around 
you know, thinking we're better than everyone else. That's not what it is. But we see God's word and say, okay, God is holy. I'm nothing in just Isaiah. Yes, the people are wicked, but I'm wicked as well. And so God help me in my life to be more like you. And by spending long periods of time with God, we get to this point. But if we don't, we'll never get to that point. But also, number three, the meaning of the ox, we're co-laborers together with God. We are working together with him. If you've heard anything that I've said this year so far, I think you've heard 1 Corinthians 3, 9 a lot. That we are co-laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. That means God has done something in your life. You should be an edifice of his glory. You really should. So when people look at you, they should see that's a good replica of Jesus Christ and what he can do by his grace. That's what it should be. And that's what God desires it to be. And so, because we're yoked up together with him, I want you to consider something. If we're yoked up together with Christ, will we ever fail? No, that's exactly right, Blue. We'll never fail. But we decide to get unyoked from Jesus, what's going to happen? We're going to fall flat on our face. And that, that happens. <laughs> it does, right? And so we have to make sure we're yoked up with Jesus working together with Jesus. 2 Corinthians 6, 1 says, We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. So do we realize the grace of God that has been extended to us? In the great, and if you do realize the grace of God that's extended to you, is it in vain? Is it worthless or empty? Does it mean nothing? Because I can look back at my life and I can see very clearly and distinctly the grace and mercy of God that he applied on my wretched soul, and this is why I serve him. This is why I go out for him, is because I realize where I was, and I realize where he has taken me. And so you'll never get there until you realize that. So you have to see exactly what God has done for your soul and what he has done in your life. And this is why you serve him in a great capacity. This is why the Apostle Paul labored for him abundantly. This is why the devil hated him. He hated him. I, I truly believe, even though the Bible doesn't say it, there was a party in hell after the Apostle Paul went to heaven because he was a huge threat to Satan. Are we? Think about that. Sons of Sceva, Peter, Peter I know, Paul I know, but who are you? I don't know you. Do, does, do, do the little minions in hell know who we are? And do they hate us? Do they hate us because of what we do, the power of God's on our life, the influence we have? Do they hate us? If they, if they do hate us, it usually comes by affliction, tribulation. There's scars. I'd encourage you to read 2 Corinthians 11 and look at Paul's scars. Oh, there's a lot of them going all the way down to, I think, verse number 32. Thrice shipwrecked. Five times he was beat 39 times. Woo. That's a lot of scars. Do we have those? That's because we have to be co-laborers together with him. But the wonderful thing is there's freedom in serving Christ. It says in Galatians 5, 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Turn with me to Romans 6. Belushi said this Wednesday night, but it wasn't Romans 4, it was Romans 6, brother. That's all right. He mentioned verse 11. Likewise reckon. That means to make an account of. Even up, right? Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign, or have dominion, or control in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. I truly believe this is what the world needs to see. Christians in the church alive. They've yet to see it. 
They have. They've yet to see it, but God is saying, reckon this to happen. Make sure you put that old man to death. It needs to happen. So we can do the work he's called us to do. Because we're co-laborers together with him. We know we won't fail. But yet, this old man needs to become dead and the lust thereof and not yield ourselves, our members, to the wrong things of unrighteousness, but yield it unto God that yields the, the fruit of heaven. But also, in this process of co-laboring together with God, we should be cultivating something in our life. Turn with me to Jeremiah, chapter number 1. Now, Jeremiah had a wonderful task of delivering the word of God. Unfortunately, he did not see a lot of success as we would desire in our own life, and we would probably call him a failure. But we can see from his life that he was doing what the Lord desired him. But it says in verse number 10, and sometimes this is what we have to do. Actually, go up to verse 9. At the end part of that verse, it says, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and destroy and to throw down. Now, that doesn't sound pleasant. That sounds like Jeremiah maybe, just maybe, might have been like a John the Baptist. He maybe just, he was just a very bold person, right? So a lot of things that irritated people. Just, I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. But that's what God has placed in his mouth. To root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down so that a building project can happen to build and to plant. This is what God has called him to do. It's a cultivation process. You just can't go out into any field and just start throwing seed around without cultivating the field. It's just not going to happen. You have to turn the soil up. You have to get the rocks out. You have to make sure the soil's conditioned. And then you can plant it. And then it's still in the process. You're, you're still going to have to do some weed control to make sure the weeds are not choking out the seed in that whole entire process. I'm no, I'm no expert in planting, trust me. I don't have a green thumb. But there are some things I do know. And so your rows are going to have to be clean. You're going to have to go out there and pull some weeds. If you don't have any pesticide or weed killer, that's going to take care of it for you. There's a lot of work that has to be done. And here, this is, we see from Scripture, this is the whole cause of Jeremiah. Paul says in Galatians 6, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to, his, soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So that's a wonderful promise God's given each and every one of us here tonight. But what are we sowing in the field? Because the truth be told, if we sow evil things, we will reap what? Evil things. But if we sow good seed, what are we going to reap? Good, good fruit. That's how it operates. But if we're just going around just sowing the wrong things, you better believe it's coming. Corruption is coming. Your Number one, your soul is going to be corrupted because you're so bitter and you're so... You have that unforgiving spirit, but it's also going to affect others. It's going to affect your ministries. It's going to affect who you are as a person. You're going to do, start doing things you would normally do, and you're going to reap it at some point. You sow to the wind, you reap a whirlwind. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And oh, how the fall of it is going to be seen. But this is the ox. God's called us to something. Are we willing to follow the Lord? C.T. Studd once said, I'll close with this thought. Too long have we been waiting for another, for one another to begin. The time of waiting is past. The hour has struck. War is declared. In God's holy name, let us arise and build. The God of heaven, he will fight for us as we for him. We will not build on the sand, but on the bedrock of the sayings of Christ. And the gates and the minions of hell shall not prevail against us. Should such men as we fear before the world, ah, 
before the sleepy, lukewarm, faithless, namby pamby Christian world, we will dare to trust our God. We will venture our all for him. We will live and we will die for him. And we will do it with his joy unspeakable, singing aloud in our hearts. We will a thousand times sooner die trusting only our God than live trusting in man. And when we come to this position of the battle is already won and the end of the glorious campaign in sight, we will have the real holiness of God and not the sticky stuff of talk and dainty words and pretty thoughts. We will have a masculine holiness, one of daring faith and works for Jesus Christ. A man that gave his life for the Lord. Are you willing to do the same for Jesus Christ tonight? Let's pray. Gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you for the privilege of your word. And I'm very grateful, Lord. Very grateful for the men and also the women that have dared to live for you in this world. We do know it's by your grace, Lord, that they were successful, that they labored in your strength and power. And Lord, we come to you asking that you would help us do the same in our own life. I pray that we would not trust in the arm of the flesh, which certainly does fail us, but help us to trust in our God to live for him give us wisdom Lord in our daily life to do the maintenance that's necessary to make sure we're living a life in tune with heaven and its desires I pray that our heart would be sensitive Lord to your word give us give us Lord teachable spirits help us Lord just not to hear but to heed I pray that today would be a new change in our life to serve you in a greater way. Thank you for constantly serving us. Truly, only eternity will reveal the magnitude of your service when it's unseen to us. But thank you for how you intercede for us. Thank you how your mercy keeps us. Continue to help us as we strive for you. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can stand to your feet, if you would, please, with your heads bowed, eyes closed, as the pianist plays through a verse of invitation. If God happened to speak to you, as always, let me encourage you to do business with our God. He's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So if you're lost in here tonight or watching live stream, let me encourage you that there's a Savior that's willing to pardon you, willing to forgive you. But you first have to see your need of Him. But if you're in here tonight, your, your life is wayward with the Lord, can I encourage you, ask God to bring you back into the fold, bring you back into fellowship with Him because we cannot walk in the light as he is in the light. And we are living in sin in our life. So, so may God help us and encourage us as Christians pray. you all out here tonight. I forgot to mention this, but I think it's something we need to be reminded of. If you're sick, stay home. Amen? 
Amen. If you're sick, just stay home. That'd be a good idea. That'd be wonderful. But just something to think about during this time of year as it gets a little bit colder out. And so that doesn't mean that to stay home because you have a little sniffle. Okay? But use wisdom. God's given us wisdom. And obviously wash your hands and all those things that we need to do. That'd be wonderful as well. Amen. It's good to have you all here tonight. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. I encourage you to be here Friday, 6 p.m. It's going to be a wonderful time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this night you've given us. Thank you for your faithfulness. We do pray that you'd go before us. Lord, give us someone in our path this week, a divine appointment. Lord, that we may influence with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give us wisdom as we do so, Lord, and may you be glorified. We thank you for all that you do for us. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. You're all dismissed. Lord bless you. I was going to get out of here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good night.